Welcome everybody to this CHAMP webinar on weight and balance. My name is Bartjan Haasbeek. I am CHAMP event and engagement manager. And our three panelists today are Ruth Faber, John Martin, and David Grimoubre. Before introducing Ruth, John, and David, I would like to address that we are still not able to meet at industry gatherings and must keep our social distancing. CHAMP has organized a series of webinars to engage with you. We appreciate you took the time to attend this webinar and hope you and your families are keeping safe. As most of us are working from home, you could be experiencing some background noise. I'm also working from my home and not in the comfort of our general office where we are better equipped. Before starting, I would like to address some housekeeping items. Uh, the webinar will take around 30 to 45 minutes, including questions. All the data we show is fictitious, and we would like to engage with you by and have organized a small quiz and poll to learn more from you as well. The webinar will be recorded and you will receive a recording after the webinar. And you can ask questions with the webinar tool. Uh, please don't be shy. If you have any questions, use the tool and we will answer them during the webinar we will, or we will answer them um, offline directly via email. If you're interested, we could organize a one-on-one -on -one call uh, with one of our specialists later on um, after the webinar. We will be discussing a um, weight and balance system. I will introduce the, the panelists. Then um, Ruth will explain why weight and balance is important. Um, John will explain the features and de de benefits during a live demo. And David will show you the customer perspective with the customer's view. And after that, the key takeaways uh, by, by Ruth. And then it's time, of course, for, for questions. Our panelists today, um, we in Luxembourg, we have Ruth Faber, Champs Weight and Balance Analyst, and John Martin, Champs Weight and Balance Product Owner. And we are especially delighted to welcome David Grimonpre, Ground Operations Manager at Cargo Logic Air, who will inform you on the key benefits of weight and balance. Ruth, could you please kick off this session and explain a bit more about weight and balance in general and why this is so important? Yeah, thank you, Bartian, for introducing us so nicely. Today, I have the pleasure to introduce our advanced weight and balance solution to you. And I am very happy to have uh, both experts, uh, John and David, on board. And we will just take you on a 45-minute flight into the world of weight and balance. So what is weight and balance? Weight and balance is, simply put, exactly what it sounds like. However, this relatively simple sounding term is actually a fairly complex subject. This is because weight and balance is not only a key factor for the stability of the aircraft under various operating conditions, its performance, the fuel efficiency, and therefore its carbon footprint, but it also produces required legal documents and is critical for the safety of operating an aircraft. Now, not to worry though, you don't need to be an engineer to calculate weight and balance. So what is the best solution? Champ Cargo Systems provides connected IT systems and services to power the air cargo supply chain. Today, we like to introduce our specialized freighter weight and balance solution. John will demonstrate it later to you in a moment. You will see that our weight and balance is designed to take a load off your mind. And I want to wrap it up in a nutshell for you. Champs Weight and Balance is a powerful tool for advanced load planning. It is designed to make a aircraft uh, loading faster, safer, and more efficient. It does not only help you to uh, reduce the costs and uh, make a maximum use of your available space, but it also has a state-of-the-art algorithm that helps you achieving fuel-saving targets and of course, a reduced carbon footprint. 
the enhanced auto load functionality uh, provides a user-friendly convenient software which complies with all safety and auditing regulations it has a unique standalone version and that allows you a safe load planning even while you are uh, operating ad hoc charter flights to remote locations where you have no internet connection last but not least it covers all existing modern narrow wide and uh, narrow and wide body freighter aircraft from the Boeing family the MD11 and uh, Airbus A330 so much about the key features Thank you, uh, Ruth. That was quite interesting. Um, let's uh, do a little quiz. Uh, this one, it's, it's about the math, but you do not have time to calculate the question. So please do a guess. Uh, a, a guess. I will launch the question now. Exactly. And Thank you, Vatian. Uh, in this case, uh, it's, uh, it is about um, how many uh, air cargo um, there is and how many freighters would be needed to, to fly all this uh, air freight with uh, be, uh, 747s. Exactly. Thank you, Batian. The projection for 2020 predicts that there will be uh, 62.4 million metric tons of cargo to be transported in the world. If a Boeing 747-400 has a maximum payload of 128 metric tons, how many uh, Boeing 747-400 would, need, would be needed to operate to transport that uh, cargo? Please guess, about a quarter of a million, just less than a million, about half a million. I see the system is collecting the responses. Uh, the, the votes are getting in. We're not entirely there yet, so please do vote. I'm waiting a little bit longer. Yes, we are now getting to a nice acceptable uh, number of people who voted. Um, I will now share the results. I see that most of you have voted for about half a million, and that is actually correct. Wonderful, thank you. Now let's see what we can do with that number. If issuing a manual loading instruction and manual load sheet takes about 40 minutes per flight, how many working hours per year an airline should calculate for this task in total? Please guess again. Is it 295,000 hours, 325,000 hours, or even 400,000 hours? The votes are getting in very slowly. Um collecting the responses the system said okay now it's adding up just a little little more we're almost there yes let's close and share the results that's very good result you even th uh, thought it's 400,000 hours you are very close because um, just calculating it makes three 325,000, but there's no wrong or right because it just shows that it's a big number and it even translates into 13,000 days or 37 years. That shows us nicely that there's room for improvement and, of course, for increase of efficiency. John will uh, now demonstrate to you how our weight and balance solution can help the cargo airlines to perform these legal documents eight times faster. And he will also explain to you how the algorithms tame the physics, leaving little to no room for error. John? Thank you, Ruth. Yes, indeed. When a user logs in, he's taken straight to the flight schedule screen from which he can select a flight to plan. On logging into the flight, it takes him straight to the load planning screen, at which point he could receive an incoming UWS message advising of the payloads available for that flight. When he accepts that UWS message, the system automatically populates all the payloads onto the load planning screen. By default, they are listed in weight order, starting with the heaviest first, but a user can also choose to select by destination or by special handling code. In this particular case, though, we're going to leave it on the default weight function 
and we'll show you how the system works. The load planning screen is dynamic. It's simply a case of drag and drop the individual payloads onto the aircraft. As each payload is dropped onto the aircraft, the display is updated, including the weights on the left and the trim envelope display on the right. The user can also elect to use our auto load function. The, each aircraft has an individual zero fuel weight center of gravity target. And by using the auto load function in this particular aircraft, the zero fuel weight target is 28% Mach. You'll see that the auto load function has achieved five seconds of loading time and achieved the target center of gravity Mach. It also placed the first destination by the door at P left. Mousing over, the user can view the details of each individual ULD loaded on board the aircraft. If he's happy, he can then produce a loading instruction, which is produced as a PDF document. So it can be printed out and handed to a loading supervisor, or it can be sent as an attachment via email, for example, to any outstation to do centralized load control. Likewise, he can then produce the load sheet, which is also a PDF document which can be printed and handed to the crew, or again, sent as an attachment to a remote station. Once the loading instruction has been issued and the load sheet has been issued, the user can then send all the standard messages and the CPM has a dual function. So by producing and sending the, UW, the CPM, the dual functionality which results is the first flight leg is then closed. and the load planner for the second leg is now enabled his load planning. That load planner will receive an incoming CPM message. He can view, and when he accepts it, it also has the functionality of loading all the transit pallets in position on board the aircraft. Our system is a linear based system. So rather than the old analog approach where everything was built from tables, just like the old manual load sheets, our system uses the data from the manufacturer's um, uh, weight and balance manual. So everything is done on a interpolated linear basis guaranteeing 100% accuracy. The admin area is completely controlled by the customer's administrators and complies with all legal requirements. We also have a standalone solution, which is designed for use when there is no access to the internet commonly on ad hoc charter flights or when the load planner has to work in a remote location on the airfield where there's no access to the internet. Thank you, um, John, that, uh, that, uh, that was very, very interesting. Uh, I would now like to introduce uh, David Grimond Price, Ground Operation Manager at Parallelogic Air who will further explain uh, a little bit about the uh, point of view from a customer's perspective. Hello, Good David. Good afternoon. 
David, you're not only the ground operations manager at Cargo Logic Air, you're also the system administrator of the weight and balance system. Can you share your user experience within the admin area of the system, please? Certainly. Um, thank you, John. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to be a panelist in uh, today's webinar. And indeed, yeah, I'm, I'm handling roughly 400 user profiles um, within the system and uh, I've, uh, main, I'm maintaining about 200 stations and for uh, a total of two 747 uh, aircraft of which I've put in all the parameters and all the details, which was uh, quite easily done. And thanks to the, the, the admin interface, I'm, I'm not only able to maintain all this data at all the times, I also have a complete audit trail and uh, all the reporting tools at hand to produce those trip files, statistics, and all those other operational documents uh, that we need, the, the, the low plan, low cheats, um, the legal documentation, yeah. Thank you, David, for sharing your real life experience with us. We just had a quiz about how time consuming manual freighter handling can be. And you also brought us an example of a recent manual load planning and manual load sheet. Could you tell us the benefits of using the CHAMP weight and balance system compared to the analog approach, please? Certainly, John. Um, as you can see on your screens, everybody, the, uh, there's a manual um, load planner in front of you, um, which, uh, which I only just recently completed just before we uh, got Champ online again. Uh, and as you can see, there's a lot of writing, there's a lot of repetition in the boxes, and there's an awful lot of calculations. There's uh, the, the, the trim indices, which are absolutely minute, and you have to take very special care, obviously, to make sure that you get everything correct. And with Champ, it takes all, all, all that legwork out of um, the manual system so uh, basically it's it calculates everything for you and you know it's going to be right uh, and as well as with, with the uh, load sheet the load sheet is is um, on an A4 um, and it's double sided as you can see um, once again a lot of boxes to fill in uh, it's very time consuming and uh, the trim, the trim envelope, yep, it's it's there, but you have to uh, have your your pencil, your paper, your your ruler, and uh, it's in trim, uh, obviously uh, according to the thickness of of the implement that you're using to 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 use. So, uh, Champ obviously takes it all away, and and Champ, my balance, it all goes simpler, it goes faster, and it goes safer. And you know we were. And also, I have to admit, we were very happy with the fast implementation within three weeks from contract signature. That was brilliant. Thanks, David. Um, can you tell us about your experience with our standalone version of the Champ Weight and Balance? Yeah, um, for us, it was an important feature. Uh, we, we, we are a charter uh, ad hoc ca carrier, 747. And um, we, we go to destinations all over the world at very short notice. And oftentimes we have to go without uh, a qualified uh, or to places without qualified load master or loading um, load planners. And our own, our own load masters are then traveling with the aircraft and they're able to produce all those legal documents offline, which is great. Once they get to the hotel, uh, yeah, we do allow them to go back to the hotel and they have uh, internet access. Then we just they can just synchronize um, with, with your server, and um, it's 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 all uploaded and it's it, it's available for us to see uh, and and to control the documentation if need be um, at all times. Yeah, it's great to hear you let your loadmasters go to the hotel once in a while. Things have obviously changed since my day. Um, what about last minute changes? Uh, LMCs, last minute changes. Well, yeah, that's as simple as it can be as well. Um, due to the multiple options that we have to update 
uh, the payload for uh, to either the standard uh, IRT WS message as you've shown, or, or even recently, and I love this, the developed um, Excel functionality. Uh, we're able to enter last minute changes within seconds, and then we can release a new load sheet to, to the flight deck almost instantaneously. And, and even if if we don't do it, there, there's even an op, uh, if we can't do it on the computer because uh, of time restrictions, there's even a, an LMC box on the load sheet which we can put the data in uh, manually if need be, but we very, very rarely do that. How is your experience using CHAMP weight and balance system for centralised load control? Well, centralised load control is very important to us because, like I said, you know, we, we, we uh, sometimes go off at very short notice to destinations and we can't always put a load master on board. So uh, the option is then to um, engage the load planners at a destination and we can, once they um, have sent us, or once we get the details from from the warehouse uh, at the destinations, myself or one of my colleagues, we can simply put in all the details, send off the LIR on, on, on the internet uh, as an email, it's a PDF attachment, uh, it's instantaneous and the same with the load sheet as soon as we get the, uh, the uh, fuel figures from the flight deck. It's usually from the flight deck themselves, they'll email us or, or call us. We can just enter that, we can sign it, we can send it back off, and it's it's a very, very rapid process. Super. To wrap it up then, Dave, is there anything you'd like to add specifically that we've not mentioned so far? Yeah, well, uh, the um, the environments you have, you've got, you've got obviously the live environments, which um, we, we use for the live flights, but you also have the training environment. And within that uh, system, when we have, um, for instance, commercial phone up and say we've got three 20 ton, 20 foot pallets, will it fit? We can we can put those into into the aircraft. We can see if if we're um, exceeding any linear loads as to where we put them, or whatever. We we can almost instantly, instantly, within half an hour, maybe uh, give a, a, an answer, yes, it will fit, no, it won't fit. And and um, that's, that's one of the great things about it. Um, also, with, with 20 years flying experience that I've had, and uh, I've, I've done countless, countless of manual load sheets and manual load plans, and I, I've been uh, flying with the various 747 carriers. There's two things that I've really learned um, when the aircraft is on the ground. And the first is you, you want to keep the flight back off your back so that you can concentrate on, on doing your work. So, so you have to make sure that the catering is very important. If they keep their hands and their mouths busy the, and their tummies full, they won't bother you. But that's quite short lived. The second thing is that um, the uh, flight deck like to have the paperwork in a timely manner. It has to be correct and it needs to be legible. As you saw with my manual ones, it, it, a small mistake it looks, looks awful and it's not very clear. With CHAMP, you get all these three wrapped up quite nicely and the paperwork is perfect and that keeps the pilots happy as well. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, thank you, David. It was great to have you join us on the panel. And we've learned insights from a real live user, um, many of which haven't changed since my days of doing it. Um, so thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Yes, thank you, David. That was beautiful feedback. Um, good to hear that. that make your life easier unfortunately we cannot help you with the catering <laughs> but yeah let us go into the poll and engage with you and asking a few questions so we would like to know uh, from you um, if you are already uh, operating full freighters in your fleet 
if you do not operate freighters, if you have recently converted a passenger aircraft into a so-called freighter, which is a new normal, we know, we are, uh, if you are looking at expanding your uh, fleet with freighters or if that all doesn't apply to you, please help us by selecting an answer. Yeah, and I see the votes again coming in. Very good, responsive. Yeah, perfect. Let's close and share the results. That's interesting that uh, our audience is basically uh, already operating full freighters in their fleet, which is very good. So you have uh, uh, chosen the right webinar to learn about our specialized freighter weight and balance. Thank you. Thank you. It's over. Next question. Yeah, we would also like to learn uh, how you currently perform your weight and balance. Uh, so is it uh, by doing manual weight and balance? Are you already a Trump weight and balance um, user? Uh, do you have an alternative computer system? Some are also doing weight and balance with Excel. Or if you do not operate uh, any freight aircraft, you of course don't have a, a weight and balance system. Again, the votes are getting in. Yeah. And here are the results. That's very interesting for us to learn that there's a, that you are using alternative computer systems. So uh, maybe you uh, will be interested uh, in, in uh, learning more from us and uh, we can give you a specialized demo. But uh, it looks also that uh, there's a lot of um, users out there performing weight and balance with Excel and uh, manually is still uh, being used. This is also interesting. Thank you very much. Let's close and let me also, um, we ask you a few questions, please. You can also ask questions to us. There are quite a few questions coming in, um, but we had, still have time, of course, to answer, to answer those questions. And if not, then we will answer them uh, separately offline. Um, I have a question um, which came in already. Um, if you have a, 60 plus ULD backlog of uh, Q6 and 7 uh, uh, pallets, will it optimize your capacity? Um, currently not, um, because our, our system is focused on an individual flight at a time. However, um, as you've seen earlier, we, we have uh, quite a sophisticated auto load um, system in there. And something we have been looking at um, for the foreseeable future is expanding that autoload functionality to be able to look at a larger, as you say, backlog um, and to be able to, if that list is prioritized, uh, allocate them to the available space on the aircraft. So as I say, currently not. However, it, it is on our horizon um, and we, uh, we hope to have that in the foreseeable future. Okay, great. That's good to hear. Uh, one more question now before we go to the key takeaways, and I like this one. Uh, can I trial the software? Yes, indeed. Um, we have, um, and we have always with our customers, provided what we've called a try and buy environment, um, which we offer for a limited period of time. Um, and what we do there is we give you a generic uh, version of the environment, usually with your aircraft type in there, so that you and your staff can experiment with it, try it, try the feel of it, see how it works. Um, and we would be quite happy then to further engage with, uh, with you on your interested side and discuss the further aspects of it. The interesting side too is if a potential customer does decide to go forward with it, that try and buy environment forms the basis of what will become their test and training environment. And that's the environment where we will train the administrators and customers, load planners um, to use it. But be warned, 
uh, you may well find it very difficult to try and prize that out of your end users' hands. They all tend to love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go to the, uh, ta the key takeaways and uh, the summary of today's webinar. Yeah, thank you, Bartian. Yes, uh, thank you. Before we start uh, with the Q and A session, uh, with the with the rest of the questions, uh, the team would like to thank everyone for your participation. And I would just like to quickly wrap it up for you. Um, uh, the, so we have learned that our solution, which some customers recently called a nice bit of kit, uh, provides you with the the key elements being uh, stability performance and safety. But we also learned how it helps you to perform faster. Uh, it helps you to save costs on many levels, being it by uh, optimizing your fuel burn and increasing your payload. Uh, your airline uh, will see an improvement uh, in overall capacity and efficiency. And uh, as David just confirmed, it's a really user-friendly tool. Now, we are also proud that it helps you to achieve your ambitious sustainability goals. With the auto load algorithm, uh, you can save fuel and optimize the aircraft's performance. And what is even more important, you can reach your environmental goals to reduce the carbon footprint. What about cutting over in two weeks? Well, implementation can be fairly fast. And with our team of experts, we have the know-how, capacity to perform very rapid cutovers. We have a customer support that is available 24 by 7, of course. And uh, last but not least, our system can communicate to any other cargo handling system your airline is using through the standard messaging. I would like to uh, close by saying that the format of this webinar was very exciting for us. and we happy that we could show the, the weight and balance system, uh, but most more importantly, uh, we are eager to hear from you out there in the world of air freight uh, um, in this special, in these uh, challenging times. And um, so we are really uh, looking forward to your questions now and uh, hope that we can give you helpful answers. Thank you. Bartian? Yes, thank you, Ruth. And indeed, there are quite a few questions coming in. Um, uh, John, I guess this one is for you as well. Uh, can we give access to ground handlers to load and plan flights? Yes, indeed. Um, as well as, as, as we were discussing earlier about the individual airlines' own load planners and load masters using the system all the time. A lot of uh, scheduled airlines, for example, they allow the local handling agent to perform those um, duties on their behalf. And they quite simply give authority and usually training to their handling agents. And they can then do the weight and balance within the system on behalf of the airline. So that's absolutely not a problem at all. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, how soon could I implement a solution? Uh, Ruth, I, I, I think you have mentioned this, but I'm not sure. So if you could answer this one. Yeah, thank you, Bajan. I'm happy to uh, have that question. Uh, indeed, uh, we have uh, recently implemented new customers within two weeks, uh, but timeframes can vary. So um, we have to be very mindful of certain factors um, uh, such as um, our customer wishes uh, for the implementation to be completed uh, and how much time the customer can dedicate to the initial training period. So there's a, normally a protocol uh, that begins with us setting up the system and uh, training the admin stuff um, around uh, aircraft data in the, in the system. And after that, uh, we have um, we recommend to train the trainer, and it it can take uh, more than two weeks. But we manage, and uh, we we are set up for for very rapid cutovers uh, within the team. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. I think that David also referred to this. Um, then there is a, a a very long question with a with a lot of different questions in it. Um, First, can you create a NOTOC and send it via CETA? This is a question about the NOTOC that two people have asked. 
Uh, and then uh, also, is there a possibility to send the load sheet via ACARS? Well, thank you, Bartian. Uh, I'll address the two, obviously, separately. The system itself does not produce a full NOTOC. And the reason for that is, and we discussed this at length um, with all our first customers, and all of them are using systems such as our own cargo spot that does produce a NOTOC. And the NOTOC is actually quite a big document with a lot of information within it. Um, and they're quite happy that their current cargo systems do that. What we are um, potentially able to do is um, enable the weight and balance system to be able to send the ULD serial number and its final position on the aircraft to their systems that uh, create the NOTOX to populate that final column. But no, it doesn't. And um, you remind me, oh, the ACARS. The ACARS, yes. our system is able to produce, as well as the PDF load sheet, which you've already seen, it's also equipped to produce a standard IATA formatted NOTOC message, which can be sent um, via ACARS directly to the aircraft. Okay. Um, yeah, a few other questions as well about uh, uh, this one, for example. Do you have FAA or other aviation authorities certification? Uh, well, we ourselves don't. Uh, and the reason for that is that is the responsibility um, between the airline and their local aviation authority. And just to clarify, the, the approval uh, from those aviation authorities, if they require it, is not for the system itself. It's for its output, in other words, the load sheet. And the various ways that local authorities um, require that to be done varies, but the average or standard way is that airline would then use the system in parallel to what they currently do uh, to produce copies of the same flight using the two different approaches and then produce a number of copies to their local authority who will examine the output within those documents and then approve them if they are worthy. But so it's not the system itself, it is the output and that is the responsibility of the airline and the local authority. But CHAMP is always happy to support the customer in whatever is needed during that process. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, there are a few questions about uh, passenger aircrafts, and uh, Ruth, you already mentioned Praetor, uh, the conversion to to Praetor for for passenger aircraft. Um, one is: Could it be extended to allow load planning for mixed cargo passenger flights? That's one question. And, and somebody else asked: is there an option to use passenger data within CHAMP to produce load sheet for passenger aircraft? I guess it's a bit uh, to do with the same thing. Uh, I would like to start answering and maybe you want to pass over to, to John uh, from uh, from his experience. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, um, the passenger handling, aircraft handling is mostly done in, in so-called um, uh, departure control systems that um, also uh, are able to collect uh, the data from the check-in and, uh, and and the cargo is only implemented. So mostly these freighters that nowadays fly with, uh, with bulk in the cabin, they are also handled within uh, these passenger um, uh, aircraft handling systems. So uh, with our system that is uh, dedicated to freighters, we we are not able at the moment to to provide a solution for passenger aircrafts and maybe john you would like to also add something uh here yes indeed um what ruth has said is, is absolutely correct and from what i understand from colleagues of mine out in the industry there who are involved with the the prater loading Bearing in mind, of course, those aircraft uh, do not have the same structural integrity as, as a pure freighter, and therefore they don't carry heavy cargo. What they tend to do is use the passenger DCS systems to do the equivalent of boxes in seats, although some have had the seats removed and they're laid on the floor. 
but their approach to weight and balance is significantly different in that passenger weight and balance systems tend to go via a zone-based system, um, which is fine for, for these, these light consignments uh, on a passenger floor. The whole reason the CHAMP weight and balance system was born was customers who had used these systems and tried to use them for pure freighters found that the passenger DCS weight and balance systems designed for the passengers were not able to handle the absolute limitations of a pure freighter. So we designed the system from scratch, not working by a zone-based system, but indeed working by an individual balance arm system and running loads per inch on board the aircraft. So it's very specific to freighters, um, purely because of the, the need um, of the consignments for a freighter and the needs of the industry. Yes, okay. Yeah, Ruth, I like your, your your remark about bulk in the cabin. Uh, it's indeed bulk in the cabin. I've never heard of that expression in in the sense to a prater, but yeah, this is how you could could see and look at it indeed. Yeah. Um, um, then a question um, which again is very interesting uh, about fuel savings. Uh, how much fuel would this save me? Is has been asked. John, I, I think you can answer that. Yeah, if I could answer that. Um, there are a, a number of studies with various airlines and associated businesses into exactly how this works, and these are ongoing at the moment. As you saw earlier from our auto load demonstration, we, we set an individual zero fuel weight center of gravity target. It's generally um, scientifically understood and accepted that an aft center of gravity is the most efficient uh, for a, a long-haul aircraft um, as there's less drag on the aircraft. And so we used as an example of 28% MAC on here. Studies so far, so far show that if you operate to an optimum center of gravity, as the drag is reduced and the center of gravity for zero fuel weight remains constant throughout the flight, that this is the most efficient way to fly. Good load masters, of course, with their manual load planning should achieve a target near that. But generally, if it's, if it's actually achieved, um, fuel savings of anything up to 4% um, appears to be the consensus to where it is at the moment. And of course, on medium to long haul operations, that becomes quite a significant fuel saving, as well as reducing your, your carbon footprint. Yeah, and if I may add, uh, every liter of fuel that you are not uh, carrying is actually increasing your uh, capacity. So it's a win-win situation if you are uh, using autoload uh, with our system to, to really uh, plan uh, to the target MAC. Yes, indeed, and uh, yeah, I could all, only echo that as well. So it's not only time saving, but also 4% fuel saving and optimizing capacity. Um, yeah, that sounds almost like a no brainer. Um, then we have time for one or two questions. Um, do, you, do I have to use the CETA type B network to receive and transport, transmit industry standard messages? Shall I repeat it? Do I have to use CETA Type B network to receive and transmit industry standard messages? Um, I'll take that one, Bachan. You you don't have yeah. to. You don't have to. All the relevant industry messages are supported, and the Type B network is recommended as it has a guaranteed delivery, and we can therefore trace any message that's not delivered or received. But all messages can also be transmitted by email in addition to or indeed replacing type B. And load sheets and loading instructions, as we mentioned earlier, are produced in a PDF, which can be attached to emails and, and placed on an airline's IT network or, or printed. And in addition, all messages into the system can be processed 
by copy pasting into the offline message screen. Payload information can be updated from and downloaded to Excel. So no, it's, it's, it's not an absolute, um, but you can see why we, uh, we tend to focus on that. Yeah. Okay, we are on the 45-minute mark, so um, I will address all the other questions offline via email to you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, thank you for attending the Weight and Balance webinar, and you will always be receiving the, the recording of this presentation, and this will also be available uh, on the online content page on the CHAMP website. Uh, Ruth, any final words from you before we conclude this session? Yeah, I would just like to uh, highlight what is here on the screen because uh, we are we are very happy that uh, as an appreciation of your participation, if you uh, uh, would like to uh, get in contact with us and uh, find that our system could be uh, something you are looking at, uh, uh, our commercial team has put together a very special discount that is valid for the next six months. So uh, please do not hesitate to to just get in touch with us uh, at the web at champ.ero email and uh, we will be very happy to to meet you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one demo thank you very much from our side yes thank you audience thank you panelists uh, especially David uh, thank you very much and uh, many thanks and please stay safe bye-bye thank you bye-bye